Before we get into the updates, I'd like to thank everyone for their feedback and support, and especially the people who have reported bugs and gave ideas for new features to be added. This is my first major coding project and you guys have been incredible with the response so far. And of course, I'm still always available to receive and address your feedbacks, so keep that coming. I'm just going to showcase some artworks that Bgen has been used in. A bunch of other people's works are still under NDA, so I can't show them in the video, but I was able to get permission from these artists and showcase their works. So enjoy. I'm going to link their accounts in the description below so go check out their pages and give them a follow. Now let's get into the updates. In bgen groom and bgen flow there have been updates to the initialize, the formers and simulation tabs. In the initialize tab I cloned the low poly button and added it to the utility tab up here for easy access. In the previous versions you would have to go to the initialize tab to access this control but now while working at different stages of your hair groom, you can easily toggle that control. It's particularly helpful while dialing in the right settings for simulation. Texture masks. For every function that requires a mask, such as the density mask or the party mask, a quick toggle button has been added to help go in and out of texture mode with ease. Along with the texture mode toggle button, an extra tab bgen texture was implemented to make navigating new and old textures created for your hair groom easier. The main reason this was introduced was to streamline your hair groom workflow and remove the need to switch to the texture to end panel or open up a shader editor. Now for the materials, a new feature has been added that lets your hair inherit a painted texture from the base mesh that your hair is attached to. So to do that, you just go here in the materials tab under EVN cycles, you can see strand and surface. So the strand is the strand color. That's the normal one that everyone has had since the first launch of BGen. And there's the surface. To switch between them, you can click this and this. But to actually activate what you're switching to, you turn this dial to one. One is the surface and zero is the strand. And this dial lets you switch between both of them. So now it's on one and it's black and that's because there's no texture that has been added to it so far. So just going to add a new texture. Uh, we can turn it red per se and call it surface texture and voila. Now the hair is red to properly visualize what's going on. We can go into the shader editor here and just add the texture we created. So just add an image texture and locate surface texture. There it is and plug it in. Now we can see the whole mesh is red. Uh, let's just um, paint in some extra colors to fully see what this is capable of. So I'm just going to toggle into texture mode here. Locate the surface texture. There it is. And I can start painting. I'm just going to paint here black. And you can see it inherits what the surface color is. So this would be good for your animal grooms or if you just want to do something different with your hair or if you want to create like a leopard print on your hairstyle this would be good for that and the good thing with this is that you still have access to all these other controls while you change so you still have access to your metallic your specular your roughness and transmission so you can properly dial in all the settings you want and yeah that's the feature under the deformers a new tab has been added called hair accessories 
as the name implies, it lets you add accessories to your hair. The way this works is that you create a collection and populate it with different shapes or hair accessories you want added. In this case, I created a collection called beads. It's gonna unhide that. And that just has um, default shapes added to it. So I have cube, uh, torus, and inside is an icosphere. To make this shapes show up on your hair, you just go into HA collection, hair accessories collection, and you pick the collection that you have your shapes saved in. Uh, in this case, it's beats don't forget to activate it oh and you can see it's basically just <laughs> a mess right now and that's because these shapes are probably as big as the base mesh so we're just gonna reduce the scale or you can reduce the shape from here directly it doesn't matter so i'm just gonna reduce the scale here and you can see we have the different shapes scattered across each um, clump of hair or braids in this case uh, you can see that it's random um, if you only want one shape here you're just going to have one shape in the collection but i have three so i have three different shapes scattered across the hair now there are different parameters here um like random position this just makes the position of the different accessories random across the splines and you also have the scale the instance probability if you reduce this it's going to randomly take out some of the hair accessories on different um, clumps of hair so one means that on every single clump or braid in this case there's going to be a hair accessory on it zero means none and in the middle it's a 50 50 where they're gonna attach themselves to and you can basically vary that with seed to take different seeds of where the hair accessories land on um if you have a simulation they're going to stay in the position you set them in and you can vary it or increase or decrease that position as you see fit now the simulation tab has the most changes. It has been completely reworked to make it a lot more user friendly. So right away, if you click into the simulation tab, if your groom doesn't have a simulation guide set yet, you have the option to create sim guides and that's all that's here. So let's create one and we can set the collision collection to showcase the resolution. 24 is good. And yeah, you have your simulation guides. I'm just going to put this in low poly. Everything is set already where most of the changes are. If you open up the simulation settings, you can see we have way more controls here. We have the weight paints, which is still the same as before. The sim values, few more values have been added and I'll explain them in a bit. The collision settings, now you have more settings and control how you want your hair to collide with the object or even collide with itself. And now you have the big to cash settings. With this, you can set how long you want your animation to be. If it was 1000 frames, you can just set 1000. Or if you want to start the simulation from, let's say, frame 20, you can do that. You also have the option to bake to disk or you can just bake to the internal memory of the blend file. And you have the option to bake all physics and delete all physics. The sim value, the biggest change here is that there is no longer an option to apply sim values because everything works in real time. So you don't need to change the settings and apply, change the settings and apply. You can just work and as you change it, it applies real time. Two extra values have been added, the stiffness and the force multiplier. With the stiffness, it basically works to maintain the original shape a bit better so as the stiffness is on one now and i play the hair just falls down flat and this is with the weight pain value the resistance is a lot higher at the roots and it's less at the tip with the stiffness on one it just goes down if i increase the stiffness just see how more of the original shape is maintained and the highest value here is on 50 so it's kind of like a multiplier on the resistance in the weight paint area in the force multiplier the reason this was included is that i noticed in the previous version if you want to add wind or some type of force in your scene and you want your hair to be affected by it you would have to crank it to a really high number like 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, and that would have been a problem if if you had other things in the scene being affected by the wind so here you can basically add a force multiplier so you do not have to crank your wind up to such a high amount so you can increase this value decrease it or just play with it to see what works basically it's kind of annoying but unfortunately a lot of things with simulation is trying and error so try your best to tweak these values and get the best results and not just be okay with the first value you see so those are the updates to the simulation tabs it should be easier to manage your simulations for your hair now if there are any more things i can add to make it more intuitive and a bit better to work with please let me know and if it's something i can do it should definitely be added in a future updates
the previous version, it was a duplicate button and a rescale hair size button. And now those have been added into the drop down menu. So in the drop down menu, we have the duplicate hair, the rescale hair. And in addition to those, we have the add BGN groom and remove BGN groom. So these two are self explanatory. You remove the BGN groom, it's removed and you can add BGN groom, choose the one you want and you can add it back. The last one is the fix hair position. To visualize what this does, I'm just going to put an indicator of where the center of the mesh is and that shows by the gizmo. If we click on fix hair position, we have three options. The reset to world origin, reset to object origin, reset to current origin. What this does is that it resets the position, scale and size of the mesh object and all the hairs attached to it. So if we reset to world origin, it's going to reset. This is where the world origin is. Uh, let's say we have a rescale function applied here. Let's say rescale by two. And yes, so the hair has been rescaled to two times the original size. If we use the fixed hair position and we reset to object origin, it resets the origin back to the center of the object and also rescales the hair to the original scale. So there are two main reasons you would use the fixed hair position. The first one being if your hair and your mesh objects have different origins. So I'm just going to show you what that would look like. So if I right click set origin, origin to geometry. Now you can see the hair doesn't seem to sit on the geometry. There are different cases where the hair can be way up here and your mesh is down here. And some people have brought that problem to me. So to fix that, you can just go to the drop down menu, fix hair position, reset to object origin and voila everything has been reset and the second reason you would use this is if the origin of your hair cap is not at the center of the mesh it might pose some problems when you're trying to attach it to a rig and that might also cause some problems with the hair being attached to the hair cap so same process go fix hair position and to the object origin Resetting to object origin is the best case scenario if you want to get proper movement when you attach your hair cap to a rig And for the last quality of life updates, starting with this version of BGen, you would no longer need to uninstall and reinstall the latest version of BGen. Instead, that feature has been built in. So the new way to update is that you go to Edit, Preferences, under Add-ons, you locate BGen Groom or BGen Flow, drop down the menu, then you have the option to check for the new updates right here. Now, this is the latest version, so it says add-on is up to date. You also have an option to install older versions. And to do that, you go to install master slash old version. Now, under here in the drop down menu, you can see some older versions of BGen. Keep in mind that some of these older versions may have bugs that may not work well with the version of Blender you're using now. So um, use this as your own risk. But to be on the safe side, always be at the latest updates because that has the most bug fixes. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for all the support you've given me so far. So the next video I'll be working on is how to attach your hair cap to your rig for animation and simulation. Subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you'll be alert when the next video comes on. And follow me on my Instagram or Twitter to stay up to date because I usually post my experiments with some features I'm planning to add in the future. And of course you can always leave a comment or send me messages on things you don't understand or maybe some bugs you might have found. I'll be happy to help. Once again thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.